It's terrible. It's terrible if he's your friend. Maybe everybody has a friend that's gotten in trouble. What is going on, Ape Nation? So as promised, this is part two of the video series that I promised you on my channel. And we're going to get right to it. All I have to say is if you haven't seen part one yet, make sure you do that first. Yes, we are going to be talking about hookers, Jim Cramer, Ken Griffin, and so much more. You don't want to miss this. This is going to be the biggest story that I've reported on my channel yet because there is going to be nothing bigger than this. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this party started. If you decide not to sub, if you decide not to smash that like button, you are going to get caught with your pants down. That's all I got to say about that. Alright, so picking up right where we left off in part one, this was one of the strangest occurrences in Wall Street history, but not for Dendrion. Dendrion had actually witnessed even stranger occurrences like brutal naked short selling attacks occurring simultaneously with antics that simply have no precedence in the world of medicine. Now, as you will see in a moment, these strange occurrences nearly destroyed Dendrion in 2007 and have since then prevented patients from having access to Dendrion's treatment, which was a treatment that, as uh, it'll become very clear to you, should have reached the market long ago. And from the day of that very first strange occurrence, you know, the one in September 2005 when Kramer predicted that Dendrion would become a battleground stock, to the strange occurrence that happened in April of 2009 when Dendrion stock nosedived by 65% in just 75 seconds. More than 60,000 men in the United States have died of prostate cancer. And since we do know that Dendrion experienced naked short selling and naked short selling is in fact a crime, well, who in the hell are the criminals? And when much of the medical community rallied around Provenge just one month earlier, you know, before the manipulation crashed the stock to just single digits, was this an attempt to make the company ripe for a hostile takeover? And uh, was this possibly done by the same people who once sought to destroy it? It's rather peculiar of the SEC that while it's ever so eager to hassle CEOs of small companies, it goes to considerable lengths to protect billionaire hedge fund managers like, you know, Kenny. Uh, the SEC has publicly stated that naked shorts, selling naked shorts, is a crime. And the SEC has even said that it has evidence that illegal naked short selling occurs on a large scale and does serious damage to public companies. But it almost never says which hedgies are responsible. It never says who's flooding the market with phantom stock. And as far as the SEC is concerned, it's pretty much all a big secret. And as it states on its websites, the naked short selling statistics of individual firms and customers is proprietary information and may reflect a firm's trading strategies. So I suppose that the SEC doesn't really give a crap that those proprietary trading strategies are illegal. It's going to still want to protect them. Makes sense. You see, the SEC doesn't require hedges to disclose even their legal short positions. As a result of this, it's pretty much impossible for any journalist to paint a perfect picture of attacks on companies like Dendrion, AMC, GME, or whatever other stock you may be trading that's being attacked like this. But brokers and other sources can tell us who some of the short sellers are. And by analyzing public information, such as data that hints at various hedge funds option strategies, we can make educated guesses as to who has the most to gain from a company's decline. We can also come to understand the relationships that bind certain hedge fund managers and miscreants and ask whether these people might have been acting in concert. So looking at data points, I guess that's what it's all about. It gives us a clear pattern. And one person that Dendrion pattern tied back to was a guy named Michael Milken. A lot of you probably have never heard of him, but no worries, we're going we're gonna to introduce you. So the famous junk bond king is what he was referred to, and he was also a criminal stock manipulator. And during those times when Dendrion has been most evidently a battleground stock, nearly every hedge fund known to have placed large bets against it and a significant number of Dendrion's detractors... Uh, such as esteemed medical professionals, financial research analysts, government officials, and uh, yeah, Jim Cramer himself even, 
have been tied back to Milken or one of his close associates. Most of the hedge fund managers involved in this story are actually part of a tight network that's been in operation for over 20 years, but I'm sure you guys have known this because it's pretty obvious. They do stuff such as exchanging information. They go on attacking the same stocks, employing the same tactics. Everything we've seen from Kenny and his little goons is the same thing that went on here. Now, this is the same network that attacked the major financial institutions back in 2008 and possibly contributed to the collapse of the American financial system. And a good number of the people in this network have ties to organized crime. And by that, I mean the mafia. And, and no, we're not talking about the 3-6 mafia. We're talking about the mafia mafia. As for Milken... He was released from prison back in 93, at which point he went to considerable lengths to rebrand himself as a prominent philanthropist. One of the philanthropic outfits that he founded is the Prostate Cancer Foundation. Now, this is a little ironic for me to, you know, talk about. I don't know, am I crazy or, uh, I mean, you guys let me know in the comments. But anyhow, um... For this, he pretty much received widespread applause from the media, government officials, and the business elite. And because Milken has effectively bathed himself in the glow of his philanthropy, and because his public relations machine is so indisputably clever, many people find themselves saying that Milken's financial crimes were but misdemeanors. The slight over-exuberance of a market innovator. This, of course, is ironic because, you know, they were, in fact, not misdemeanors. He did do Fed time, and, uh, yeah, I mean, what else can I say about that? Hey, I, I can't watch it. I can't read it. Mm. It's terrible. It's terrible if he's your friend. Maybe everybody has a friend that's gotten in trouble. The remorse I feel will always be with me. 